It's going to be an awesome time. I'm not going to waste time at all. Uh, all the way from Ghana, a uh, very good sister. She's been with us right from beginning to now. Um, she's loaded with the word of God. And this topic is so important. The reason why I want us to concentrate on this topic is if you really want to work with God, then there are two things involved. It's purging, pruning, purging, purging, pruning. God will do the pruning, but you have to look into your life and purge everything out. They purge everything out. So if you really want to work with God and really grow with God, that relationship, that, that, that fellowship with God, it will take these two things. There's no way you can make it without these two things. And that is why as Christians, we just want to humble ourselves to hear this word so that we'll be doers of the word. It will make an impact in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Sister, you are more than welcome. God bless you. Praise the Lord. We give God praise. We thank God for another beautiful time. And let me say Happy New Year um, to everyone. My name is Suskaya Shiring, and I fellowship with uh, Kavi Worship Center. We thank God for the gift of life and the new year. And um, Dr. Kutea, thank you for um, this opportunity. I give God glory for your life and um, for the Cold Network. Let me greet our cherished audience on Zoom, on YouTube, on Radio Par, and wish everybody a very happy new year. The last two weeks, we started a discussion on pruning and purging. And we have had seasoned uh, ministers of the gospel share with us on the subject from various angles. And I want to take the opportunity to thank them for their deliveries and their submissions so far. God richly bless you all. Um, I would continue the discussion on pruning and purging, looking at two main scriptures um, from John chapter 15 and then um, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20, from verse 20 to 21. And then I will draw a few more lessons as we proceed. I am looking at um, what pruning and purging is which have already been dealt with by some speakers and so I won't spend a lot of time there. We'll look at the place of pruning and purging. We'll look at the purpose of pruning and purging, the process and the product of pruning and purging. And so um, that's just briefly the outline I have for us. So pruning and purging are two very important activities that are critical in the life of a believer. Sorry, my video went off. So pruning and purging are very important activities that are critical in a believer's life. And it would interest us to know that God does one of them. And we as believers are expected to do the other. But both are necessary for our growth and our usefulness in the kingdom. Now, let me take us to our key scriptures. The first one, as I said, is John 15. And it reads, I am the true vine. I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. And he produces the, the branches and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they may produce even more. Verse five, yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Second scripture, 2 Timothy 20, 2 Timothy 2, 20, 21. ESV says, now in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, 
some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. If a man therefore purge himself from these, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified meat for the master's use, prepared for every good work. Now, we see from the two verses, two portions of scripture we have read. The first, God says that he is the gardener and that he will prune every fruit that, every branch that bears fruit. And then in 2 Timothy, Paul tells Timothy that there are vessels of honor and dishonor. If any man purges himself, he will be useful for the honorable stuff. So I think last week and two weeks ago, the definition of pruning and purging was given. But simply put, I want to say that pruning, um, which is an agricultural term, simply means to cut off mostly the leaves or branches of a plant to trim off dead or overgrown um, parts of a plant or a flower or whatever. But purging means to clean out well enough. <laughs> My apologies. And when I was thinking about that, I was thinking about when we were young, how we used to clean the bathrooms. For those of us in Ghana, there was some chemical called a akesha, and you have to scrub until it is clear, clean, crystal clear. And when we were children, we were sometimes given some medicine to drink, and they said it was to purge you. It was to take out of us the impurities. Now, in this contest, let me submit that in as much as both words come from the same Greek root, from the two scriptures we are looking at, we have a part to play and God has a part to play. Now, the Greek root refers to pruning and cleansing or purging as, you know, one word. And we won't go into that. Now, in as much as they look similar and same, there are some differences. And I've said that already, that the pruning is done by the gardener and purging is our responsibility. But both of them have a result of setting us apart for special use. Now, in our key scripture, Jesus said, I am the vine, my father is a vine dresser or the gardener. And we, the, the disciples, including ourselves, are the branches of the vine. And verse five says that. Now, the father's role, he cuts. And beloved, just yesterday, I was listening to one seasoned man of God who preached on this subject, who said that pruning is messless. He's been to a grapevine before and they cut, the people were just cutting just like that. It's not like you're taking your time to trim so that something. But God needs to do this so that we will bear more fruit. He cuts off all the unwanted areas, the things that he thinks won't help us. Are the things that he chooses to cut and he cuts them the way he likes. He doesn't cut them on our terms, but on his terms. Now let us move to the place of pruning and purging. Now, purging and pruning actually happens in the life of believers. We are the ones he's chosen. We are the one he needs us to conform to his image. And in 2 Timothy, he says that we should purge, we should get rid of, get rid of the sins, get rid of the words. Pastor Ross talked about that two weeks ago from um, Hebrews 12. And Paul told Timothy, get rid 
It means that we need to get to a place of being pure to be used for that honorable assignment. And we've established that already. Now, what is the purpose of pruning? Three things. The purpose is the, to make us clean, pure, sanctified, useful for the kingdom. We've said that already. Number two, pruning on the other side is to make us more fruitful. Why? We'll look at that later, that being fruitful brings glory and honor to God. So ultimately, God wants us to become like Christ because Christ will come again. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, 25 to 27, that he will come for a bride that is sanctified. He used the analogy of husband and, and wife. Said, husband, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might purify her. Heaven cleansed her by the washing of the water by the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. So pur purifying us, pruning us is because Jesus is preparing us and he won't be ashamed when he comes to take us as his own because we would have been purified. The rough edges must go. The things, the weights and the things we must let go. Number three, the purpose of pruning and purging is to make us more effective in ministry. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse four. Paul said he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are troubled. When we are able to give them the same, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. So God allows us to go through some things to make us better and to give us the opportunity to share our experiences to help others. Beloved, the things we go through are not just for us. Sometimes it is for somebody whose life you need to touch in the future. What is the process of pruning? Now the process of pruning is like a cycle in the life of a, be of a believer. It is not a one-time thing. It is a lifelong thing. And you may deal with one situation today, you think you're done. And that is just for that season. And then the Holy Spirit comes again and brings another issue. And you have to deal with that. He is doing all of that so we will become more like Christ. And again, he chooses when to do it. And again, let me say that the process could be in the form of trials, in the form of temptations from the devil, now, can you imagine that the scripture says that after Jesus had been baptized, he was led into the wilderness by the spirit to be tempted of the devil. Think about it. Now, pruning and purging could, pruning can happen in the form of sickness. Now, Paul had an infirmity that God decided not to take away. It can come in the form of opposition, persecution, abuse, neglect, rejection, and so on and so forth. And we have to note that not every negative thing we experience is from the devil. Most of them has God's stamp on it, like Job. And we have to be careful how we behave when we're going through the moment of the wall, the moment of persecution, the moment of pruning, because how we behave is very critical. And now let me say this. Can you imagine how many times you have bound, prayed your head off, binding the devil, binding the, the, the witches in your home, when as a matter of fact, what you're going through is not from the devil, but God has allowed it to make you better? Think about it. The product of purging. The result of purging. The product is that we will become more useful in the hands of God. We've said that already, 2 Timothy 2. 21b. He says, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be useful for honor, sanctified, 
meat for the master's use, prepared for every good work, not some good work. Number two, the product, the result of purging. The father is glorified and honored. John 15 verse eight, I like how the Amplified puts it. He says, my father is glorified and honored by this. When you bear much fruit and prove yourselves to be my true disciples. I pray that our notion about pruning and purging will change from today. Every suffering a Christian suffers is from the devil. And sometimes we think people have sinned. We've just got to be careful and know the mind of God. Whether it is something you need grace to endure or it is something you need to work at or something you need to bind. Number three, the product of, 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 of pruning. It will make us partakers of his eternal glory. First Peter chapter four, verses 12 and 13. It reads, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fury trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners of Christ in a suffering so that you will have a wonderful joy of seeing his glory when he's revealed to all the world. The product of pruning is to make us useful, pruning and purging, and I'm combining the two, is to make us useful for God. God is glorified in the end and we become partakers, not only of a suffering, but of his glory. Let me spend the last five or 10 minutes to talk about what should be our response. How should we respond to pruning? How should we respond to pageant? What should be our attitude? Because some of us have just left the faith because we went through one trouble or the other. Some of us have gone cursing because something went wrong. Some of us have compromised on our faith as though we never said Jesus is Lord. Some have left the faith totally. For all you know, that was the test God was giving you for an elevation and we failed. May the Lord have mercy on us. So I have eight things and Dr. Daniel, allow me. I have my eight responses as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. You know, I love alliteration. So letter A, first one, we must abide in Christ and his word. John 15, seven and eight. And if you're unable to read, please go back and go through it all by yourself. It reads, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you wish and it will be done to you. By this, my father, is glorified that if you bear much fruit, so to prove you are my disciples. Now, the emphasis here is we abiding in him and his word abiding in us. We can never make this journey without the study, conscious study of his word. And believe you me, from the two scriptures we have looked at, the cleansing agent, when you come to Pageant. The cleansing agent is the word of God. Ephesians 5 told us that. That will be cleansed by the washing of the water by the word. So we get rid of sin. We get rid of weights. We get rid of all the things that bother us by the word. And Jesus said we should let the word abide in us so that we will do what? We will bear more fruit. So we cannot do away with the word of God, abide in Christ and in his word. Number two, we must bless and not curse. Romans, 4, Romans 12, 14, Amplified says, bless those who persecute you, who cause you harm or hardship. Bless them and do not curse them. I was dealing with the use, I was dealing with the use of the tongue in James very recently, James chapter three, when he talked about the fact that the same mouth we bless God and we curse and 
and you have the image of God sitting in the person you are cursing. But for all you know, God is using that person to make you a better person. He's using that person as the wood in the oven to lick the fire, to make you that bread or that gold that people will look on and cherish in the future. We cast them. And who is going to affect that curse? Not my God. Let us see. We've got to consider it all joy when we go through trials, temptations, persecutions. Why? James chapter one, verse two and two to four. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any, of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. We lack it so much because we are running away from the things that will make us strong and better. Let me finish up. Letter D, we've got to be determined in our hearts to remain faithful to the end. Hebrews 3.14. But if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as we did when we first believed, we shall share in all that belongs to Christ. I love that. Persecutions will come, but I'll look on and I'll look on with perspective that this will make me to share in all that Christ. The glory of God. E, embrace the chastening and the pruning of God. Hebrews chapter 12, five to seven. And we have not gotten, and we have not forgotten. Sorry. And have you, forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children. He said, my children, don't make light the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord's discipline those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. I said the pruning is the work of God on the believer. Verse seven, as you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever had, whoever had a child who was never disciplined by his father. F, let us fight a good fight of faith. First Timothy 6, 12. Fight a good fight, fight, the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you, which you have declared so well before many witnesses. We stood before people and said, I accept Jesus and I'm a Christian. And tomorrow we turn our back. Paul says, let us hold fast to the true faith. Hold on tightly to this eternal life. Because our God is faithful. He will take you through. Let me not jump. Jean, let us give thanks to God for counting us worthy of his calling to prune us and make us more fruitful. First Thessalonians 5, 18. It says, be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Letter H. The last one, you must hold on the profession of our faith without wavering. Sometimes we go to seek for other options when we are going through trouble. Christ is not enough. Then we go and look for some juju, some sex, other thing to add on. We should not waver in this faith. Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold on firmly to the hope we, con we profess because we can trust God to keep his promise. If, you, if it's a sickness you are going through, he is faithful to keep his promise of healing. If it is death, if it is any persecution, anything, he is faithful. Beloved, may I conclude by saying that though pruning and purging may be very uncomfortable, God is always present 
working with us in the process of our transformation. Just after Paul wrote in, just after Paul wrote in Philippians 2, 12b, that we should work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, he continued in verse 13 and said, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to do his good pleasure. He never leaves us. Romans 8, 28 will tell us that all things will work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And Isaiah 40, 43, 1 and 2, verse 2 actually tells us that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. The flame will not consume you. Why? Because he is there. He's the first one. He told his servant, he said, do not be afraid for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And so as we go through all the challenges of life, let us remember that he is with us. And again, we should remember that no trial, no temptation is too big for us to carry. First Corinthians 10, 13, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Pruning and purging are necessary for our growth and transformation, beloved. And we must know God's will concerning every situation and partner with the Holy Spirit through and through. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor Siska. And uh, Dr. Daniel just went off. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste too much time. I know that our next speaker is already and fired up to bring us the word of God. So uh, Pastor Abby, uh, you are welcome. Please, you are welcome. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Isaac. Uh, God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Daniel. God bless you, my sister, uh, Pastor Siska. We um, have been blessed tonight. That was a wonderful, wonderful submission. Um, well, it's, it's not out of place to say Happy New Year and let Pastor Abby please say Happy, Happy New, New Year to the people everyone. of God. It's always it's always nice to be to be here and we've been we've been participating in the background uh, and it's always great to see wonderful faces, people of God. Thank God He brought us into this year. Mm -hmm. And we're saying, you know, it's an interest in that God, you know, is starting us off with purging and pruning as we're starting the new year. You know, at a, is a is a time that we that most people talk about New Year resolutions. Well, of course, you know, a lot of them, a lot of those new New Year resolutions, the wheels have already falling off now. Um, and then people talk about things they will do uh, differently and and so on. But I thank God that we're we're starting off the year on on the right footing with God. We're talking about pruning. We're talking about pur purging. You know, it's interesting. I, I was thinking about this and I, I said, uh, David, the, the great man of God, the man that God said, the man after my own heart. He said, he said uh, in, in uh, um, Psalm 51 verse 7, he said, purge me, purge me with high soap. He said, and I shall be clean. Uh, he said, wash me and I shall be white as snow. David went through a situation at that time. He probably never thought that, you know, that bit, that all horrible behavior was inside him. So when the, when the prophet confronted him and said, well, it is you, you know, when the prophet told him the, the, the story and said, you know, there's a rich man and this rich man has loads of flocks, but then this rich man now took the, 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 the lamb of this poor man, this poor man, that was the only one he had. 
and dressed it for his visitor. David said, whoever did this must die. And then he must pay seven times because it's easier. Jesus said, look, he said, he said, remove the log in your own, uh, in your eyes first before you take out the speck in another person's eyes. You know, so it's, uh, it's interesting. So David was confronted with what was inside him. And he said, God, he said, only you can do this. He said, purge me. Amen. You know, I, I like I like the story of, of uh, because of our time, I like the story of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet of God and he, he saw heaven you know he saw a vision of heaven he said in the year that king Uzziah died he said i also saw the lord is high and lifted up and his train fills the temple he said the angels were crying holy 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 lord god almighty he then he described the angels he said they had they had six wings he said with two they, they covered their faces. They couldn't behold the glory of God. With two, they covered their feet. He said, then with two wings, he said, they, they flew. He said, when, when he saw this, you know, every time we see the glory of God, every, every time we come face to face with, like, with an encounter with God, it brings, it brings us to the point of our humanity. And then we realize that, oh my God, he said, what is me he said because i am a man of unclean lips i dwell among the people of unclean lips and then the bible says one of the angels flew to the to the altar and with a, with with tongues from the altar he picked a coal and laid it on his lips and then he says in isaiah 6 7 he said and laid it upon my mouth and said lo this has touched you he said, it's a touch your lips. He said, thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin is purged. Amen. Amen. You know, it's, uh, we're talking about, you know, I like what uh, Sister, uh, Pastor Siska said regarding, you know, with pruning, without pruning, we couldn't be used of God mm -hmm. as he wants to use us. Mm -hmm. He wants to use us much more than we want to be used. You know, just now, I remember the story of Moses. Moses was a very rash rash warrior when he was in Egypt the first time. You know, he, he was a man who would kill at the drop of a heart. You know, the Bible says he looked here and looked there and there was nobody. So he killed the Egyptian and buried him in the sand. But the same Moses, God was willing to use him. God wanted to use him mightily. But guess what? <laughs> God said, no, he said the wrath of man will not work the righteousness of God. So God couldn't use him. God had to take him into the wilderness. He had to run away. You know, then he lost his strength because he was now 80 years old. He's lost his strength. He's lost what he thought was his great ability. And then God came knocking and said, well, you know what you tried to do, what you attempted 40 years ago, now is the time to do it. He said, God, he said, send whoever you want. He said, not me. Amen. Because God needs to bring us, I'm still talking about purging and pruning. God needs to bring us to the end of ourselves before he can use us. Amen. And for as long as I think, oh, well, I'm awesome. Who else will God use but me? He cannot use us. We need to get to that point where he's brought us to where he wants us to be, where self is completely gone. Then we realize that everything I have that is good, the he said, you know, he said the effect, the, the, uh, the uh, what was writing in Philemon, I think. He said, it is the acknowledgement of every good thing in you that makes your, the, 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 that makes your faith. It makes it effectual. It makes it, it makes it powerful. You acknowledge the good things that is in God, that, is, that God has put into you. It's nothing about the sensual wisdom of this world. It doesn't profit anybody. But, you know, I'd like to quickly read from the book of Matthew, chapter 3, from verse 11. This was John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist was talking to the, to the Israelites because he came and everybody trooped to John the Baptist in the wilderness, which is a sign. You know, it's, it's a lesson for us because when we are doing the will of God, when we're where God wants us to, God can bring the nations to us. Amen. You know, sometimes we want to do, uh, I want to do, I want to wear what uh, uh, Pastor uh, Isaac is wearing. I want to dress like uh, the Majoris. I want to, he said, John the Baptist, he, he had camel's uh, uh, skin for clothing. 
He ate locust and wild honey. He lived in the wilderness. The whole nation came to him. He was such a mighty force that the Pharisees and the, you know, the rulers of the, of the synagogue sent a message to him and said, look, you got to tell us who exactly are you? Amen. That is just, that is by the way. But if we get where God wants us to be, there's no, the, the whole world is our oyster. He can bring anybody and he can keep us in a village if that's what he wants. He can keep us with 10 people if that's what he wants. Amen. It's, it's not my work. It's not your work. It's the work of God. And God knows what he wants to achieve. Praise God. Uh, they, they came to John the Baptist in verse 11. It says, indeed, I baptize you with water unto repentance. He said, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. He says, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He said, he should baptize you with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Ghost, and with fire. Amen. But verse 12, he says, whose fan is in his hands, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the, into the garner. He said, but he will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. I thank God for the fire of the, of the Holy Spirit that we carry. He's constantly burning the chaff in us. Constant, if we let him, he's con constantly, when every time you hear a word, the, the, the disciples, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, the two of them, they said that our heart not burned within us when he spoke to us. Because every time we hear the living word of God, is burning off some dross. It's, it's God said that will sit as the refiner of silver. Is always burning of something, burning of something. Thank God he doesn't do it in one day. Otherwise, all of us will be gone. That's what, <laughs> let me not even go into that because I was just about to digress now. Thank God in his mercy, he doesn't do it in one day. Otherwise, we couldn't, we couldn't endure. Amen. It will just burn us off completely, but he does it day by day. It's a lifetime affair. You know, I was speaking to a group of people and I was saying, and I was saying, well, I thank God that in the last, you know, uh, for, uh, it's been over four decades now. I've been reading this word. I've given my life to Christ. I've been, uh, I, and I wasn't saying that to, 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 to brag. I was saying that because I said to myself, you would have thought by now I should have become a spirit. I should become, you know, everything should, but no, I still have in me things that he's burning. They're just the same way he's burning stuff in somebody that just got saved yesterday. But we must always release ourselves to him. It says in Hebrews chapter one from verse, uh, I'll quickly because of time, read verse from verse two. It says, had, uh, it said, he's talking about, he's talking about, um, God, he said, you know, I, I love Hebrews. Uh, you know, every, every believer should love Hebrews. Every, every believer should love every book in the Bible, but, but I love Hebrews. He says, God who at sundry times in the past, he said he has spoken in diverse ways, in diverse manners through to the, to the Father, through the prophets and, and so on. He said, but in this last day has spoken. Uh, I always make, uh, you know, I always put emphasis on that. He has spoken. You know, what, what, once the Lord has spoken, he has spoken. He has, he has spoken by his his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Isn't it interesting that the same word that made the world, the whole world that we live in is the same word that is living inside me and you. You know, one day would understand that. You know, some of the things we pray about, we just need to listen to the word. We just need to consult the word. We, we just need to eat the word. And, and that is enough, more than enough for us. It says in verse uh, three, it says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. You know, if Jesus said, if you're looking for the father, I say, just look at me. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father because it's the express image of his person and of, of upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself, purged our sins, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high by himself. You know, John, John the Baptist said, he said, he is coming. He said, his fan is in his hand. He said, he will purge your iniquity and burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. When he has done that, he says he sat down because when God did that, he made of us a new creature. He made us new 
afresh we're completely new but guess what that's why i love that scripture you you know if you have been if you have been on this platform you must know that there are certain scriptures that are pivotal to me one of them is uh, romans 12 from verse uh, from verse 1 it says present present your bodies a living sacrifice you know a sacrifice is a sacrifice is gone it's out of my hand amen it's out of my hand is a sacrifice he said this is holy and acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service he said, I'm beseeching you to do it. I'm pleading with you to do it. I'm begging you to do it. I I'm not in a position to command you to do it. Praise God, because it's supposed to be a sacrifice. But the moment we get into that, the moment we, then it says, now it said, be not conformed to the world, but be, re be renewed, be, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why am I telling that story? When God made me fresh, he made me, he made me a new person. I'm fresh in the spirit, but I, I still see my, my, my physical body. I still haven't changed physically. You know, if I, if I, you know, if, if I had beard when I got saved, after I got saved, I still got my beard. If I, if I was black when I got saved, I'm still black when, after I, after I got saved. If I'm, you know, if I'm 25 when I got saved, I'm, I'm still 25 after I got saved. The physical, the physical body has, hasn't changed, but that physical body was under a different master before Jesus, before Jesus saved me. And that is talking about the spirit of, the, the, the spirit of disobedience that works in children of disobedience, the, spirit, the evil spirit. He said all of us were under his, under, under his leadership. Now, the, that, that spirit of disobedience has taught my body certain things. You know, there are things we learn, you know, you have trained the body to do. If you wake up at a certain time, you wake up at that time, when, with or without your alarm. If, we, you know, when, when you learn to drive, you, you learn it. The moment you learned it, then it became part of you. There are certain habits that our body has imbibe we we you know we already we already learned it and it's part and parcel of us now those were the things that god wants to get out of us the only way to do it is by us being transformed by the renewing of our minds praise god we've got to our minds needs to be new it needs to be fresh it needs to start uh, you know it's like god needs to press the reset button and there are certain things i've learned i need to unlearn them but by doing that I also need to learn new things. That's why it says, it says, it says, it says, meat, strong meat belongs to those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised. It's a daily thing. It's something I do every day. You know, sometimes we pray about so many things that we don't need to pray about. We just need to exercise. You know, it's just like somebody wants to learn to, you know, you want to lift weight and you think, or you want to do any, any, any form of exercise. You don't, you don't, you, you can read about it all you want, but, but you, you only start doing it when you do it. Amen. You only start, you, you want, you want to run, you, you want to run the marathon, you want to run, you want to participate in the London marathon you are going to have to learn to run a marathon. Mm -hmm. You don't just get, you know, people participate. They don't just wake up on the marathon day and then go and then hit the road and run the marathon. It doesn't work like that. He said, by reason of use, you know, I learn, I practice. I learn, I practice. I study, I practice. Amen. That is the only way to do it. But you know, there's this scripture, because of our time, there's this scripture I like to uh, go to. You know, it's, uh, Peter was speaking in Second Peter for, uh, chapter 1 from verse uh, five. Amen. He says, he says from verse five, he says, and besides this, he says, giving all diligence, he says, add to your faith virtue. Mm -hmm. Amen. Add to your faith virtue and to virtue add knowledge. Mm -hmm. Amen. Add to your virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge. It says, add temperance. Mm -hmm. Amen. It says, and to temperance, they add patience. And to patience, add godliness. To godliness, add brotherly kindness. Mm -hmm. And to brotherly kindness, add charity. Mm -hmm. If these things be in you mm -hmm. and abound, he said, they make you that you are neither barren. Amen. Remember what God wants to do with us. You know, the, you know, the, the, the plan that God is pruning is the one that is bearing fruit. Praise God. Mm -hmm. It's not the one that is not bearing. The one that is not bearing, he says, it takes away. 
Praise God. We shall not be taken away in Jesus' name. Mm. The one that is bearing is the one that he prunes. Mm. Praise God. He's, he, and he's pruning it like uh, Sister uh, uh, Siska just said and everybody already said. He's pruning it so that he can bring forth much more. Mm. He's not pruning it because he's done anything wrong. Praise God. Mm. He's pruning it so that he can bring forth much more. Mm. He's not pruning it because it's not growing well. Mm. Sometimes he's pruning it because it's growing too tall. Praise the Lord. But he needs to bring it down because if he grows grows too tall is it's not going to convert the growth energy into fruit because what god is interested in is fruit bearing yeah, yeah. praise god mm -hmm. god is interested in fruit bearing he said it makes it that you're not bearing or not unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ he said but this is verse 9 he said but who amen but he that lacketh these things is blind mm -hmm. he said and cannot see afar mm -hmm. And this is where I'm going. And has forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. In other words, it's easy, it's possible to forget that God has purged me from something. He said, I've got to bring it always before me, always in my forefront. Otherwise, I'm going to forget. You know, there's a saying, they say the good times we save in our pocket, the bad times we, we, we lay on our hearts. It's so easy to forget the good things God has, God, has, God has done in our lives. It's so easy sometimes to forget the things that God has delivered me from praise god and that's why sometimes when we see other people struggling with the same things we're not merciful we're not you know we're not considerate because we feel how can you be doing that but i forgot I've forgotten so soon that that was me only yesterday praise god mm -hmm. anyway he says in um this in first corinthians you know he says purge out there for the old level and i'm not gonna expand expand on this he said that you may be a new lump as ye are on living, amen. We are on living. He said, for even Christ, our Passover, uh, is sacrificed for us quickly because of time. You know, he says, uh, 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 there is, there is, uh, there is uh, let me see how, okay. Because of time, he says in this, this uh, sister, uh, Pastor uh, Siska already read this, Second Timothy uh, 2.21, he says, if a man therefore purges himself out from all this, he said, he shall be a vessel unto her, no? Stantified and made for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Now, these are very important things that we need to do. But then, and I'll go to uh, one of Pastor uh, Siska's uh, message, uh, um, sorry, passages, John 15, two, it says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purged that he may bring forth much more. You know, the reason I the reason I like that love that scripture is you know, sometimes we misunderstand God a lot. You know, he is cutting, but he says, My father is the husband man. He's not sending janitors to do this, he's not even sending angels to do this, he's doing it himself. Amen. It's just like when he says, I sit as the refiner, the refiner of silver. Now, refining silver is a very precious uh, silver is a precious metal refining silver is a very dangerous well not not maybe maybe dangerous it's a it's a very um it's a very critical uh, exercise you can easily you know i just remember now when we used to do titrate titration in uh, in chemistry in elementary chemistry you know ordinary level chemistry that you can easily go beyond the level that you're supposed to go to you can destroy the silver but to prevent that god does it himself he doesn't send anybody to do it he says when i see my image they say how do you know he said when i see my image in that silver that's when i know it's ready you know that's what god is that's all god is trying to make of me that's all he's trying to make of you. He, as long, as soon as he sees his image in me, nothing can stop God from using me. Praise God. God wants to use me more than I want to be used. Amen. You know, it says in Hebrews, amen. It says in Hebrews, it says for, for the word of God is quick. Amen. Hebrews uh, 4.12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. He said, to the piercing, even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. Mm -hmm. These are the areas where I have issues. Sometimes, you know, I don't know, you know, the things that I want are actually is do what I want. It's not about my spirit. It's about what I want. It's, it's about what is pleasing to my body. Amen. But the spirit is able to separate the two. It's able to separate. You know, that's why, you know, that's why I believe strongly. This is very important that we learn this. I believe strongly that the primary, the primary tool of God's pruning 
is his word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because his word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. The primary, if I would let him, if I would release myself mm -hmm. to him, the primary tool of God's pruning mm -hmm. is the word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we don't give the, as not sometimes, as a lot of times I'm looking, you know, sometimes I'm not talking about when we're studying the Bible because I'm looking for revelation to, to preach, to, to, you know, to dazzle the, the, the congregation tomorrow. No, I'm talking about when I'm feeding on the word of God. You know, we need to, we need to elevate the word of God to that point. Like, like the psalmist, he said, I've, I've, I've elevated your word above my necessary food. Mm -hmm. Above my, we need to come to that understanding because that is the primary tool of God's pruning. Mm -hmm. He wants to, he wants, he wants to bounce the word of God on me. I, I read it, I study it. I'm not talking about, you know, I, I'm not talking about that thing I do because the, the because the congregation, you know, because our church says we must read one chapter a day. I don't care whether it's one verse, but I read it, I understand it, I ingest it, I digest it, I sit down with it, I bring it back. Amen. That is meditation. I bring it back and process it, reprocess it. That is the only time it profits me, brethren. If this word is quick, it's powerful. If only we we'll just commit ourselves to it. Praise God. If we just commit ourselves to it, the word of God is quick, is powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword. That's what he uses to prune us. That's what he's, that is, that is his primary tool of pruning us. Amen. He says, you know, he says in uh, Ephesians, this, uh, thank God we're familiar with all these scriptures. He says in Ephesians uh, 5, 26, he says that he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the, with, with the washing of the water by the word. That is what he wants to use. If I let him, if I don't let him order, he can, he can allow other things, you know, he might use, but his, those, are, those, are, those are secondary. His primary tool of pruning me is his word. Mm -hmm. His primary tool of washing me, of cleansing me is his word. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I love an analogy that one of my friends used many, many years ago. Uh, maybe about 35 years ago, if I can remember uh, vividly. He said, you know, you can, you can be pouring water into a basket all day long. You know, you pour water in the basket all day long. He said, at the end of the day, the, water, the, ba the basket may not retain any of that water. He said, but at the end of the day, the basket will be cleaner than when you started at the beginning. Because sometimes we're studying the word of God and we don't, we think we're not getting enough out of it. But that word is profiting us. That word is doing what it's supposed to do. As long as I'm studying, as long as I'm, uh, as long as I'm studying with the right mindset, as long as I'm studying with the, with the, with the, with the um with the focus on the spirit because the spirit would expose the word you know he would take jesus said he would take of me and reveal it to you as long as i'm doing that the word of god is always there to do everything which god wants to do in my life everything god wants to do he, he does through his word but i've got to give that word is is you know his position in my life i've got to take the word as the word of god amen you know it's, this is not one of those times that i need to cherry pick what i like from the scriptures no the whole scripture is entire right praise god i cannot decide oh i like the sound of this one i don't i don't like the sound of that one let me hold on to this and discard that one it doesn't work like that i've got to hold on to the word and this purging and pruning it will happen through the word because the word is more than enough to change me mm -hmm. praise god you know jesus i mean god god said let there be the same god who said let there be is the same god who said be holy for i am holy amen the same power that came out when he said let there be uh, is, is the same power that came out when he says be holy for i am holy amen is the same power that that came out when he said you shall have love one for another amen but i've got to see him as the ultimate amen Amen. Praise God. You know, it says in John, it says, Sancti John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is the truth. I pray the Lord, you know, as long as we continue to, you know, we, we don't get to the point of despondency. We don't get to the point of, of, uh, of complacency where, you, where we think, oh, it's not going to happen. As long as we hold on to this word, this word will profit us in the name of Jesus. And pruning, let's always remember, God wants to use us. God is not pruning because 
because you know because we've done anything wrong. He's not purging because we've done we've done anything wrong. He's purging, he's pruning because he's making us better for mm -hmm. to, for a better instrument to be used in the mm -hmm. kingdom. And I pray, I pray, I want to pray for somebody who feels, oh well, I'm not, I'm not feeling this thing. Or oh, why? When is he gonna finish all the curtain? Well, he will finish all the curtain when the curtain is done. When he has made of me that person that he wants me to be, he wants me to be a well-rounded personality. Amen. And only the best is good enough for the master. You know, there's nothing I can hide from him. His eye sees everything. And because of that, I want us to pray. I want, I want to, I want to pray for somebody that Lord, the grace to release myself to your word, the grace to release myself to your word. Father, we receive that grace afresh that every single one of us, oh God, will treat your word as the ultimate. Father, Lord God, we'll submit ourselves to your word. Father, we'll submit ourselves to the scrutiny of your word. We'll submit ourselves to the curtain of your word. That, Lord God, Whenever, when you're done with us, Father, Lord God, all that is going to be left will be your image. All that is going to be left will be your glory. And Lord God, we'll share this, we'll carry your glory into the world. Father, the people will see us. They will recognize us as people of God. People will see us. They will see the glory of our Father in us because we'll be a splitting image of you. Father, your word says we are with an unveiled faces. Behold, O oh Lord, we behold in the mirror of your word. Father, we behold you in the mirror of your word. As we behold you, Father, Lord God, help us to be transformed, O oh Lord, into that person that you want us to be. Be exalted, Father. Be magnified. Thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you, people of God. Amen, amen. Pastor Abby, that was that was awesome. That was powerful. Um, one thing that you said that sounded so great and well in my spirit is the word. He uses the word to prune us, he uses the word to purge us. And that is why I'm not surprised that people are confused about how God prunes and purges, because the whole prophet like Habakkuk was asking God questions. Why will you use the Babylonians to punish the Israelites? You said they are your heritage, they are your people. So why are you using these wicked people to correct your loved ones? And then God said, you just write it down, plainly write it down. But one day you will understand. Anyone that comes to read will understand that because of the love that I have for these people, I have to use the Babylonians to punish them, to show them the way. And after I will also deal with the Babylonians, it means that God's way of pruning and purging us is according to his own plan. So sometimes you don't understand. He might use somebody who is worse. The person is by biting, he's doing all kinds of things, gossiping against you like, oh God, but look at us. I look more righteous than this person. But God decided to use that same person to teach you a lesson. And after God will deal with that person. So we shouldn't go cursing people. We shouldn't go doing all kinds of things. Let's just stay put and allow the word to, to work on us. Sometimes you don't know which branch ought to be cut or which leaf ought to be cut. The leaf that you think is the best, maybe that's the one that God actually wants to cut. And it might not feel cool uh, because that's what gives you all the attention and all the notice and everything. But God wants that particular leaf. I just want to submit to you. Allow yourself. Because God says you cut it no matter what you do, he will cut it. So God bless you so very much. You've been an awesome exposition. And uh, we are blessed to have all of you across the world. And uh, at this point, I know my juries cannot wait. Uh, man of God, my juries, you are more than welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Love God. Daniel, God bless you. Uh, Pastor Siska and Pastor Abi. And uh, that was awesome. That was powerful. And uh, we are more than blessed to hear you sharing the word of God. With these people and then the world as a whole. God bless you. Okay, Daniel, it's an opportunity and uh, we don't take it for granted at all. Um, God bless you and increase you in His grace, in that of His power. Amen. And also uh, to our viewers and listeners on YouTube and uh, Radio Power 96, respectively, we Say Happy New Year, and it is our prayer that as God is pruning and begging us, He will meet us 
and then uh, at the end of the day, the plan and purpose for which this platform was established will be seen in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Doctor, um, pruning and purging, pruning and purging. Particularly, I want to look at the uh, Ezekiel chapter eight. It's a long passage, and uh, I'm reading from the verse one to eighteen. But because of time, I'll be, you know, um, looking at some key um, verses. Amen. Now, I want to begin from the verse 1, and I read, And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, and I sat in my house with the elders of Judah. I sat in my house with the elders of Judah. Now, quickly, I want to go to verse 3 because of time. So I'm going to verse 3. He stretched out the form of a hand and took me by the lock of my hair. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heavens and brought me in a vision to Jerusalem. So we are seeing three things here. One, we are looking at Ezekiel the prophet. Two, we are looking at the elders of Judah. And then we have come to the city of God called Jerusalem. To the, to the door of the north gate of the inner court where, where the seat of the image of jealousy was, which provoked jealousy and behold, the glory of the Lord was there, like the vision I saw in the plain. Now quickly, let us move to verse 6. Furthermore, he said to me, son of man, do you see what they are doing? They are doing. The great abomination that the house of Israel commit here and make me go away from my sanctuary. Now, turn again. You will see another great abomination. So he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, there was a hole in the wall. A secret door, a secret hole was in the wall. And he said to me, Son of man, dig into the wall. And I and when I dug into the wall, there was a door. And he said to me, go in and see the wicked abominations which they are doing there. So I, I went in and I saw, I, and I saw there every sort of crippling no. thing, abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel no. portrayed around the walls. And there stood before them 70 men of elders of the house of Israel. May God have mercy. And in the midst of them, in the midst of them, maybe I'll end here. In the midst of them is Jezania or Jezania, the son of Shephan. Shephan was working in the inner court. He was relaying books in the temple. And so when he died, his son took over. <laughs> and like what we are practicing and doing in the kingdom of God today, exactly what we are seeing in these scriptures. Today we are handing over our churches to our, our children. The church has become a business company where we can transform, you know, documents in the name of our children. The church can be will unto our children. <laughs> no wonder the church is experiencing this apostle, uh, apostasy. It's a shame. We must understand that the church is the government of God. 
the church is the institution of the kingdom of God in heaven that is on earth. The church is the only in, in, institution as of all, that God has ordained to bring light onto people. But unfortunately, the church is rather galloping. The church is rather swimming in the pool of iniquity. And so today, I am coming with a very simple subtopic. Let's make the church the church. And one of the ways to make the church the church is to prune the church. And so today, my objectives are three. One, I want us to look at the parameters or the areas of pruning and purging. Then number two, we will also look at some five basic facts of pruning and purging. And if God permits and time permits me, I'll also look at how to make the church the church. The body of Christ is being contaminated. As of all. The body of Christ is being affected by the viruses of the iniquities and the abominations of the world. Gradually, we are bringing the world system into the church. And so we are practicing what the world is practicing in the body of Christ. It is a shame. Therefore, what is pruning and what is purging? Pruning and purging is what I define as a careful re remover of ungodly and unholy patterns of life in the house of God, that is the kingdom of God, and in the hearts of men. Number two, it is a spiritual, violent way of uprooting and pulling down negative systems and errors in the kingdom and in the heart of men. Then finally, it is a strategic way or a process of getting men ready for the use of, for the use of God in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Therefore, we see Moses meeting God. And the first time that Moses wanted to encounter God, God told him to remove his shoes. That is the process of pruning. There are iniquities in the kingdom. There are secret, abominable activities in the kingdom. The heart of men are occupied by satanic activities. And all these people are in the church. If we divide the church into four, it is only one out of four are true Christians. And this is a shame. And so anytime God wants to use a man, he will take him to a process of pruning and purging. And so he brought the Israelites from Egypt through the Red Sea, and then they entered the wilderness. Just like Pastor Siska said, John the Baptist, after, you know, Jesus was being baptized, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And so for, <laughs> I was asking myself, why did the Bible make, make it clear that a voice will be shouting in the wilderness? Because the journey of our Christian life has its root and its path in the wilderness. The wilderness is a system of purging and pruning men. And so, if you are not ready to go through the process of the wilderness, you cannot be used by the master. But unfortunately, we are in a generation that believes in manifestation more than maturity. 
And so we measure spirituality with material gains. May God have mercy on this generation. What are the parameters of pruning and purging? The first is the city of Jerusalem. And that is what I represent by the kingdom of God on earth that is called the universal church. So for the church in general is in total mess. The church in general is in total mess. There are evil activities going on in almost 97% of the churches in the world. The city of Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem is the city of God. The city of Jerusalem is where the seat of God is being established. And that is the kingdom of God on earth. And that is the church. The universal church, the ecclesia, the general church is in mess. There is darkness all over. And the church must be made the church. Hallelujah. The number two are the elders of Judah. And this I call the shepherds. So the first one is the sheepfold. The city of Jerusalem. The kingdom as a, as a whole. Now we are looking at the shepherds. Pastor Isaac always say, the messenger is not about the message. So the apostle, the archbishop, the senior minister is not about pruning and purging. But unfortunately, we prepare messages. We prepare messages and we take ourselves out of the message. But if a pastor is listening to me, avail yourself to be pruned and to be purged. The elders of Judah must be pruned. They were sitting in front of prophet Ezekiel with all this heart of hypocrisy and religiosity. He took the mighty hand of God to uncover their negative and evil activities in darkness. Yet, they were in the kingdom. The last place that we have to prune holistically is the temple of Jerusalem. And also for our body is the temple of God. And there are iniquities and evil imaginations in our minds and in our hearts. There are people sitting in church today who are sleeping with other people's husbands and they are in church. There are people in church today. There are people in church today who are practicing occultism in church. And they are in the church. There are people in church today who are gays and they are lesbians and they are in the church. And the pastors are afraid to speak up because they worship their belly as they are God. Pastors are afraid to say this because of fame, because of titles, because of tithes and offerings. They are afraid to say this. The kingdom of God is lacking genuine shepherds that can feed the flock of God with genuine word of God. 
there is scarcity in the kingdom. Scarcity of genuine men of God. People that can stand in for God. People who are really having their heart and the mind of God. The kingdom is lacking this. And the moment God wants to, you know, uplift a man, he begins to think about himself and neglect God. And so today, we are interested in the man of God than the God of the man. You go have mercy. There are many people in the kingdom who are after God's heart, yet they are having sexual relationship with people's wife, killing their husband and using their children for rituals and sacrifices. Like David. Sleeping with people's wife, killing their husband and using their children for rituals and for sacrifices. These people are in the kingdom and these people must be pruned with the word of God. These people must, must be exposed with the word of God. The unadulterated word of God must be spoken so that people will come to the true knowledge of God. There are brood of vipers in the kingdom that are calling themselves scribes and Pharisees. They are calling themselves the descendants of Abraham. There are Balaam's in the church who are going for people's money, turning the church into a business center, and they are trading in the church. They are receiving bribes. All in the name of Christ. And people's souls and destinies are being rotten in hell. May God have mercy. Adobo. There are men in the kingdom who are worshipping their ego. They are worshipping their self. They are worshipping their belly. And my question tonight is, is, is there no bomb in Gilead? If all these evil activities are going on in the kingdom, is there no bomb in Gilead? Dr. Daniel, you must rise as a bomb in Gilead. Also for us, you must rise as a bomb in Gilead. Or so for Isaac, you must rise as a bomb in Gilead. Because the church of God, which is the kingdom of heaven on earth, is gradually sinking. We go out messing on the church. There are thieves and unrobbers in the church. And as Isaiah said it in Isaiah chapter. 28 verse 7, that even the prophets and the priests are drunk in wine, and as a matter of fact, no place is clean. The kingdom of God is in a mess. If we can prune holistically, we must prune the kingdom of God. And once we are done with the pruning of the kingdom of God, then we must now look at the shepherds. You only give what you have. So if there are Ophelis and Phineas on the altar, operating by folk and by force, sleeping with ladies on the altars, and they come quoting scriptures, preaching to people, with excitement, without true and genuine power of God, fake miracles and signs and wonders. These are the things we are seeing in the kingdom. How can these people prune others? Even if we will use the word of God to prune the people, the people that are using the word, what are they telling them? From Monday to Sunday, what are, what are we telling the people? What's up? There are ordained pharaohs in the church, ordained Nebuchadnezzar in the church, ordained heralds in the church, and they sit in big chairs. 
You go have mercy. You go have mercy. In the kingdom, there are people in chains. And they claim, they claim that they have freedom in Christ. There are people in bondage. People are in darkness. People are into evil activities. Each day, every night, people are battling with the devil. Yet they are in church. Because the right message is not being preached to them. So people, people go to church and entertain themselves. They go have mercy on the church. They go have mercy. The church is full of magicians. The church is full of tacticians. The church is full of theologians. The church is full of politicians. Today we have doctors in the church. Yet people are sick. People are blind. People are naked in the church. They are all forms of titles in the kingdom. Yet people are going to hell or something. We have turned the church into a zoo. And so forth. And so therefore the church is full of charismatic, you know, baboons. And they are entertaining people, playing all over. Pastors stand on puppet for 20, 30 minutes, and they are insulting they are, they, 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 another pastor. Another pastor is explaining another pastor's message. This is what we are seeing in the kingdom. If this thing will continue or so forth, we can prune the members. There are foolish virgins in the church who must be taught that the gathering of dark clouds is approaching. The day of dark clouds is approaching. The wrath of God is gradually approaching the end of things. And people must be taught that we are in the season of the extra oil. There are foolish virgins in the church. And that is why I said, if we have to hand over, you know, the church unto our, ch our children and will the church, you know, in their name, the church is not the property of the man of God. The church is for God. The children of Eli failed God. The children of Samuel failed God. Let us leave the church for the owner, to choose people who can take over. But unfortunately, this is what we see in the church today. We go have mercy on the church. First of all, five things quickly. The first thing we must understand about pruning and purging is that it is a necessity and not an option in the kingdom. It is a requirement of every believer in the kingdom. You cannot be certified. You cannot be approved until you have been pruned and paged. So it is a necessity for the believer to be pruned and paged. If you are not ready to go through the process of pruning and paging, you cannot be used by the master. Number two, it looks very painful, uncomfortable, unpleasant, yet very, very beneficial. Your level of influence and impact in this kingdom depends on the number of times you have been pruned and paid. Number three, it guarantees our salvation, just like Pastor Siska was saying. Bible makes it clear that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So it is a necessity that your heart become pure, that your heart become sanctified, so you can see the Lord. 
And so you realize that anytime God wanted to meet the people of Israel, he would tell Moses to tell the leaders to consecrate themselves. And then they should consecrate the people. And then they should consecrate their camps. Three places. The people, they are come and the leaders. Pruning and pegging. The fourth thing. Pruning and pegging is done by the Spirit of God. True men by his word and prayer. Love like Ezekiel, God is looking out to people that can stand in the gap, people that can prune, people that can purge, people that can correct, people that can direct others and tell them, turn them from their evil ways. But unfortunately, the eyes of the Lord is moving to and fro, looking and searching, looking for somebody whose heart is with him so that he can strengthen such a person. But God is not getting anybody on the earth. And so it is my prayer that even as we are looking at the standard of pruning and purging, may God raise the Ezekiel's of our earth, of our time and in our generation. Hallelujah. If God will prune he will use people. If God will prune and purge, he will use his spirit. He will use his word. But God is looking for people that are ready to be used by themselves, by God. So if you have not been pruned and purged yourself, it is going to be difficult for you to use the word and the spirit of God to prune others. God is in need. God is in need of the likes of Noah, the likes of Daniel, the likes of Job's, who can use their life, who can use their lives as a living epistle to transform others, to change people. God is looking for such men in this generation. For example, how do we make the church the church? How do we make the church the church? The first thing is that there is what I call the solid grounds. With the way things are going and the church is even after trend, the church is even after trend. This pastor is doing this way. Let me do it the same way. If we don't take time, we will compromise on certain things. And so one of the ways to make the church the church is that we must stick to the word. The economy system may change, but the wages of sin can never be changed. And so we must be rooted and grounded, unshakable, unchanging. We can't compromise. We can't bring the world into the church. Number two, we must be bold enough to speak the truth in love with passion, compassion, with power and authority. In this last days, God is looking for men who can speak the truth in love with passion and compassion. People who can speak with authority and power, not excitement, not to flatter people, not to let people know that they have studied the scriptures. Because study to make thyself approved is not unto men, but unto God. So we are looking for people who can stand in the gap and speak out the truth 
with boldness. People who are not afraid. People who can stand in front of Nebuchadnezzar and tell him that, King, even if our, our God is not, you know, is not ready to save us, we will not bow. We will not bow. Boldness to speak the truth. And lastly, we are looking for people that the hand of the Lord can rest upon their life. It will, it will only take the spirit of discernment to detect this kind of evil activities that are going on in the kingdom. Until we begin to speak up on some of these things, where pastors are cursing pastors, where pastors are cursing people, where pastors are saying all sorts of things on their platform, on their pulpit, on Sunday to members, where pastors are showing their members the wrong path and the wrong direction. Until we are bold enough to speak up, these things will spoil and destroy the church. And so it is my prayer that the Lord will release his power upon our life and his hand will begin to rest upon our head in the name of Jesus. God bless us all. In Jesus' name. Wonderful. Thank you. Hmm. Wow. Wow. God bless you, uh, Elder Mark Joyce. Um, I, I, I sat quietly, and there were a few things that were running through my mind. And, you know, it, it was just too much for, for me to, to assimilate. I don't know about you, but I am full tonight from Pastor Siska, Pastor Abi, and then the conclusion by Elder Majoris. Uh, there are a few things. I mean, I know we're going to we're going to close in the next two minutes, but you know, one thing, Doctor Daniel, that really hit me is that when it comes to pruning and purging. God deals with every individually or individual separately or differently. So Dr. Daniel's pruning and purging might be different from elder majority. And that is why we need to be very careful when God is taking us through the purging and the pruning, the things that we see and that we react to what God is taking us through. You know, another word that crossed my mind was the word humility that it doesn't matter your title, where you are being to. And I always tell people that we are living in a dispensation that many of us, we, we, we equate giftings to anointing. And that anointing is different from gifting. You can be very gifted and not be anointed. Because anointing comes when you go through the process, when you allow God to prune and to purge you. That is, what, that is when a man becomes anointed because anointing, is the process. And that is why you cannot talk about the anointing without mentioning a man called David because he went through the process. You cannot talk about the anointing without mentioning a name like Joseph because he went through the process. And tonight, I don't know about you. I know that we've been filled, we've been fed, and, and, and I want you to take your time. I know that on Monday, it is going to be premiered, please. One of the things that I will say to you, I was telling Dr. Daniel that sometimes, you know, in the rush or in the thick of the moment, sometimes you might not be able to consume everything. But when you take your time, maybe Monday or after Monday, you take the video, you, 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 you ponder over it and you allow yourself for that demonstration or the exposition to minister to you. Tonight, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us. And like I said, on Monday, we are premiering it. So Monday, please kindly join us, 8 p.m. GMT. And let's share it, please. We also have a YouTube channel where we have all the videos and people of God. You know, sometimes when you go on social media and listen to some of the things that is out there, certain preachings and teachings, you ask yourself that, you know what? There is a lot going on. And it's not because I'm a member of the Code Network, but there's a lot going on here that I know that if only we can be connected and open up our spirit, that there's so much that we can learn on this called network. So please, let's recommend it to our friends. Let's share it. Listen, there are a lot of things that people are sharing. And the other day, 
we commented on something that people are fighting us because we said a man of God is prophesying. He's just, these are trivial things and, and, and it's just gimmicks. And that was the truth. And I told the guy that I, I fear no man. I respect people because the time has come for us as a body of Christ to stand for the word and defend the word and speak the truth without any fear. People of God, you don't need to be a pastor. You don't need to be an apostle. God has deposited his word in you and in me. We are children of God. Let's defend the gospel. Let's speak the truth and let's live a life that we can stand to defend. Because sometimes when you are defending the truth and you yourself, your life is not right with God. There's always a question mark. And let's stand in this truth and defend the gospel. God richly bless you for joining tonight. My prayer for you tonight is that God will prune you. God will purge you. That whatever that you are believing God for, before the month will end, may God bring it swiftly. May God prune somebody and bring you to a place of that expectation. Pastor Abi says something. He said that, you know, you are silver until God begins to see himself in you. That image is not done with you. I pray that we will become a finished product in the hands of the Lord. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. This week, may you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. May every projection of the enemy against you and your household, I stand as a servant of God, and I decree and I declare that let it be twatted. May whatever you would touch this week, let it be blessed. May you become a blessing unto others, and may the Lord favor you. I decree into your life that that which you can't do for yourself, may God do for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Uh, See you on, 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 on Wednesday. We have a prayer meeting. And Dr. Daniel sometimes doesn't do that. But on Wednesday, we meet from 9 p.m., one hour, just one hour. And then we are back on Sunday. Sunday, we meet for another one hour. So please be part of this, not only on Saturdays. Be part of this family. And I know that your life will never be the same. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed night. And I pray that uh, we will see you next week. But you know what? Share this link. Recommend it to a friend. Invite somebody when you are joining. And I know that you're going to be a blessing to somebody. Have a blessed one. Good night, everyone. Good night.